Yo OGs and welcome back to the Lone Clone series Day 56 Part 2 We're taking a quick look at the Harvest Moon that was out last night It is early in the morning It's about 6am right now And we are going to head over to uh, our Lone Clone station over here And so for Part 2 of Day 56 Which is actually technically Day 57 right now um, but we're still going to continue this with day 56 and we will come out later this evening for an update on um, on how our plants do react to the Monterey Garden insect spray mixed with some neem oil. Now we're out here early in the morning. We were going to come out last night and um, apply our application to our plants. We ended up passing out quite early last night. Missed the entire harvest moon and, um, and day 56 part 2. But we are out here bright and early, and our camera is not focusing. This light out here is not quite bright enough yet to get any nice shots, but we did get nice close-ups yesterday. We are going to hop into um, our application of our pest spray here. So in part one, we talked about plant location and also the invasion of the caterpillars that we have um, just recently undergone. And... Um, and typically, early in the morning is actually the best time to come out here and find these pesty buggers on your flowers. They're much more easier to spot, and they seem to, to kind of thrive on the outer portions of the flowers in the morning time. And as the heat comes out, they make their way to the inner portions of the flower. Um, but really quick, before we do start our application and mixing our name with our Monterey, we're going to go over a couple of uh, facts of spinosad, the active ingredient that is found within our Monterey spray. Let's see if we can get our camera to focus here. We have our active ingredients, spinosad, a mixture of spinosin A and spinosin D, which are a key component within uh, the spinosad chemical compound, and that makes up for 0.5% of our ingredients, and our other ingredients are going to be 99.5% so it is only a little bit of the spinosad that is in our uh, our pest spray here, but that is what's going to knock out a ton of pests, whiteflies, thripes, and caterpillars. And then we're also going to be adding it with neem oil as well. Now neem oil is used for just opening up the pores in your plant just so that your plant can absorb um, just nutrients, pest spray, and um, anything beneficial for your plant. Neem oil is made out of 100% neem extract from, I believe, um, let's see then, where does, where does neem oil come from? Pressed from the seeds of the Indian neem tree. There we go. So we got two organic sprays that we're going to be going through and applying to our plant here for some quick information on spinosad. Spinosad first registered as a pesticide in the U.S. for use on crops in 1997. Spinosad is highly active by both contact and ingestion. Spinosad affects certain species only in the adult stage but can affect other species at more than one life stage. Spinosad kills insects via hyperexcitation of the insect's nervous system. Spinosad is considered a natural product and thus is approved for use in organic agriculture by numerous nations. Spinosad is an insecticide based on chemical compounds found in the bacterial species Soraca polyspora spinosa, which was discovered in 1985 and isolates from crushed sugarcane. Spinosad is commonly used to kill thripes and other pests on flowering marijuana plants in a few weeks before harvest without harming the flowers or making them harmful to smoke. Now the spinosizin A with, uh, that's found within our spinosad here is with our fact sheet now it says our spinosad kills certain, uh, certain insects during their adult stage in development or their life and it says in other species that it can um, can control them through their entire life stage. So certain insects are almost immune to the spinosad early on in development until they reach adult 
adult age in their insect life. But with the Spinosin A, it is highly active against neonate larvae of the tobacco budworm, aka the caterpillar. So the Spinosin A and your Spinosin D are going to be highly active in killing the larvae and these smaller caterpillars that feed from the inside of your flowers. So, with a little bit of information on our Monterey Garden insect spray, we're going to take a look through our pamphlet here, just to ensure that we are applying it to the right crop that is going to take care of the right pests for us. And we want to know how many applications per calendar year and uh, minimum days before we do reapply it. So let's see. I'm looking for the tomato plant right now. And I'm looking for the tomato plant because the phenotypes of a tomato and a cannabis plant are quite similar uh, with feeding schedules, with um, vegging and blossoming. They're, they're flowering cycle. It's very, very close to a cannabis plant. So let's see. Where is this tomato plant at? Grapefruits, vegetables, tomato, right here. Okay, so fruits and vegetables including eggplant, ground cherry, orca, pepino, pepper, tomatillo, and tomato. So that's what we're looking at here. And pests controlled. We're going to follow this down. It controls your potato beetle, your European corn burrower, your flea beetle, your life, your, I'm sorry, your leaf miners, your loopers, your thripes, your worms, aka caterpillars. And now, so that's what we have uh, quite a bit on our plant. We have obviously our worms and caterpillars, and we do have thripes. And so hopefully, with this Monterey, we can take care of both of those issues. And hopefully continue growing outdoors pest-free. So we have our measuring cup here that we're going to be measuring our pesticide into. We have our spray bottle that we picked up from Walmart, 99 cents, just a generic spray bottle. That is going to be only used for pest spray. I do have another spray bottle that I don't want to mix up with because my other spray bottle is used for misting clones, so with a proper label, we will make sure that we don't mix those up. And then we have, last but not least, our gallon container over here that we're actually gonna be mixing our, um, our pest spray into and then diluting with water because most of the time, pest spray or nutrients, any type of measurement is done by quartz, ounces or gallons. Now, I don't know the exact measurement of our bottle here, so that's why we're not going to measure into our bottle. We're going to measure into our one gallon milk jug, and then we're going to dump our solution into our bottle here, and then apply it onto our plants. So, for our neem oil, it says directions for use. Mix one half teaspoon per quart of water, one ounce, one gallon, plus one half teaspoon of pro it or mild liquid dish soap per quart of water now we are gonna mix we're gonna skip that step of um, mixing Dawn dish soap into this we don't need it for this time being now Dawn will help get rid of um, any any pests within your soil especially ants or uh, any smaller crawling critters the soap will actually coat their body and suffocate them stopping them from living on your plant Check it out, as we're doing our daily routine, they're doing their daily routine. Yep, every day, every day. <laughs> so back to it really quick. It's funny, they are on such a time schedule, early in the morning, uh, mid-afternoon and then evening time and then s they sometimes do night flybys so they are very routine crossing over three to four times a day um, so yes getting back into our insecticide we are going to be starting off with our neem oil we are going to be measuring just a bit over a half teaspoon 
of neem into our gallon container. Now I know it wasn't too clear on specifying for gallons. Let's see if we can see. We got one gallon, eight liters, oh no, wait, no, 3.78 liters. And off the top of my head, I don't know how many quarts are in a liter, so that's why we are just gonna be adding just a little over a half teaspoon. Which it really, ooh, is not that much. That's actually gonna be a full teaspoon, so we're just gonna go with full teaspoon. Whoa, almost knocked over our neem. the way neem oil smells and it's such like a thick and sticky like coating it just coats anything like if you get it on your skin it's gross if you spill it it's even worse and then we're going to shake up our Monterey spray now I really hope to god that this spray works. Now we've worked with a couple of other pest sprays for caterpillars in the past. We've worked with Safer brand Caterpillar Killer, which did not work. It did not kill the caterpillars um, as much as we would like to see. Now that active ingredient in Caterpillar Killer is BT. And it actually does it, it attacks the insect differently rather than attacking their nervous system and just literally breaking them down um, within seconds of contact. The BT almost was a paralyzer. It paralyzed the insect for a little bit and sometimes the caterpillar was able to uh, to break out of the, the paralyzed state that it was in. Um, now let me see. We didn't check on measurement. Let's see. Here we go. Let's see. How much of this stuff do we use? Let's got the top open. I want to be super careful. Where was right here? Um, cool. You don't tell us how much to use. How are we supposed to know how much to mix into our freaking solution here? Oh, right here. What are you going to spray? Oh man, that's in Spanish. Find the English section. Um, gotta be close. Come on. Really? Oh, wow. Right there. First page. Duh. Okay. Let's see. Measure. Unit of measure. We are gonna be. Um, let's see. 16, 32 per quart per gallon. So we're working with a gallon, tablespoons, four tablespoons. Conversion factors, let's take into this, all of this into account and read over it really quick. One fluid ounce, okay, that's just conversion measurements. Let's see how to apply. One regard an insect may be applied with a trigger spray, handheld backpack, blah, blah, blah. We're using a cheap 99 cent spray bottle. None of that fancy stuff. Um, in vegetable gardens, for best results, do not use more than three gallons of spray for 1,000 square feet of area. Okay, so it looks like we're going with four t tablespoons per gallon. Now, four tablespoons is going to be all the way up here. Ooh. Oh, I thought I went a little high on that, but perfect. Hmm, interesting. This stuff kind of smells like Safer brand Caterpillar Killer, but not as distinct or potent, I guess you can say. Get all of it in there. And so now we have our neem mixed with our Monterey Spinosad. We are going to go fill up our jug of water, and then we will return to fill up our spray bottle and apply our application. Alright, you guys, we got this filled up with water. Our camera battery is running low. We got three minutes left, so we are going to try and squeeze in the 
this last part into three minutes, which we probably won't do. So now we're just taking our solution that was pre-measured out into our gallon container, and we're adding it into our pest spray bottle. Now I'm not going to fill it up all the way, just a little bit, because I want to be holding my pest spray in this container rather than this container. You just basically want to put in enough of uh, enough spray, enough application into what we need right now into this bottle, and we are gonna start spraying down the little ladies here. Now, the important part about applying pest spray, you guys, is be sure that you're doing it in the evening time or the very early morning. Now, we are still applying this a little too late in the morning time here. We should have been out here as it was still dark and applying this because the sun will be up in just a matter of an hour or so and we will still have some residual drops of pest spray on our fan leaves here and now with the sunlight that could magnify and burn our plants so by doing this in the evening time or very very early morning you can prevent burning from being on your plants so we're coming through and we are applying quite a bit all over to our plants now this is our first time working with this so we don't really know how much to apply to our plants but we do want to make sure that we cover them and we get them on the insides of the flowers here because that's where our caterpillars are thriving. So we got our GDP all sprayed down here. We're gonna take our stock and we are gonna shake off any residual sitting pest spray. And just like that, she is done. You can see some residual drops on there. She will get that absorbed into her leaf base and hopefully we'll stop our pest invasion. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to comment and like, and as always OGs, subscribe. I can't believe we finished that with like 30 seconds to spare. So again, you just want to make sure that you are getting down in there. Where these insects are living. You want to make sure you hit basically every area of your plant. And that's it. A little shake. And now we will uh, be reapplying this application in maybe a week or so. We'll give our plants a week at least to absorb this, to let them see, uh, see how they react to the spray, and to actually see if it does stop our pest invasion. Peace out, you guys. I will see you later today on Day 57.